This event is being live streamed and recorded. We'll send you a link to the recording afterwards, along with some additional resources. To listen to the audio, please plug headphones into your device or make sure your speakers are turned up. Depending on your browser, you should see these boxes on your screen, but you may have to scroll down to see them all. If you have a question, type it here at any point during the discussion. We'll answer as many of your questions as you can during this session, but if we don't make yours, don't worry, we'll send you a response afterwards. If you encounter any technical difficulties, click the Help button at the bottom of the screen. The question mark icon covers common technical issues. Now over to your host, Theo Curry. Okay, hello everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's webinar. Payroll Unplugged, moving from on-premise to payroll in the cloud. We're very excited that you could join us today to learn about the advantages of, of managing HR and payroll processes in the cloud. My name is Theo Curry. I'm the president of ADP Global View HCM, that means Human Capital Management, and I'll be hosting today's uh, discussion. As the moderator just mentioned a moment ago, I just want to remind you that you can ask questions as you want to go. There's a there's a place where you can ask questions, and we'll answer. We have a spot at the end of today where we'll answer as many of these as we can during the session. Uh, but if we don't answer your question, don't worry. We'll respond to it after uh, we finish. Something and curse you over dinner. Don't worry. We'll get back to you um, as soon as we possibly can. Okay. Let me uh, introduce today's uh, panel. Uh, that's me in the upper left-hand corner there, Theo Curry. Um, in the lower left, we have Hal Lanfear. Hal is a very well-known change agent in global transformation. Hal's actually in his second tenure here at ADP. He was here and he left to go lead the uh, big transformation at Delphi and then came back. Hal? Hello, Theo. Uh, thank you for having me on today. Uh, as someone who's been responsible for procuring, implementing, and running payroll and HR operations for a, a large multinational company. I'm quite familiar with some of the challenges we're going to be going to uh, talk about today. So I look forward to our discussion. Perfect. And then in the lower right-hand corner there, we have Andy Hone, who is a business consultant. He's a trusted advisor for clients who are defining their global payroll strategy. Andy? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Andy Hone. I've worked in HR and payroll outsourcing for the past 15 years. I've spent much of that time in implementation. Uh, for the past four years or so, I've been in my current role as business consultant, supporting clients choose the right solution on their HR transformation journey. Perfect. And uh, most importantly, with our VIP in the upper right-handed corner there is Steve Drury. Uh, he works with Cargill. It's a client of ADP, the largest private company in the United States. And Steve is a senior HR technology change specialist. Steve? Thanks for having me. Uh, so I've recently become the pay service lead within Cargill's global IT function. However, during my first seven years with Cargill, I led data management teams that supported the implementation of our ADP payrolls in Europe and Asia Pacific, and also led the process and testing work streams during our global move to employees, so uh, employee central. That's perfect, and thanks for lending your time to us today, Steve. Okay. So here, we're here to talk about moving payroll and HR processing to the cloud. And I think uh, before we really dive in, how maybe you could uh, just take a minute to explain how companies have traditionally managed their payroll. Sure. Um, I mean, a lot of it really depends on the location and size of the company. Uh, if you think about it, years ago, processing payroll would – you know, it would have involved hours of going through paper reports and using what technology was available, uh, which back in the day was even, you know, phone and fax machine. But I might be dating myself there a bit. A bit. Um, you know, technology has moved on, you know, but sort of the complexity of payroll and the need for what we, what seems like, you know, endless hard and software updates. And as companies have expanded into other states or even overseas, it's really become time consuming and, and difficult for, for people to manage payroll in house. Uh, of course, you know, the risks were heaven growing too, so companies have started to really begin to outsource that payroll further, uh, allowing them to concentrate on their core business, which is, you know, the main reason we're here to talk today. I think the comment about uh, the facts has definitely dated you, Hal, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> but let me, uh, let me turn over to Andy. Um, Andy, you know, it seems that this trend of moving to the cloud uh, really has kind of increased in pace lately, at least that's my perception. 
So what's behind this trend? Why, why are companies looking to move their HR and payroll solutions into the cloud today? Yeah. So cloud computing, cloud storage generally, they, they've both become a business trend thanks in large part to cost savings, reduced maintenance responsibilities involved on the client side. So, you know, stop and think about the resources that you save from not having to maintain on-premise software and related on-premise hardware yourselves in-house. There's so much data being generated nowadays and a company being able to compare their data to that of competitors is also valuable. Taking HR and payroll into the cloud also helps to achieve compliance with payroll-related legislation. So keeping up with compliance is routinely painful, as we know from our clients. Stakes are even higher these days, given hard-hitting data protection legislation like GDPR. All right. Okay, so, so there certainly seems to be a very strong business case for the rollout of cloud-based solutions. But Steve, let me, uh, let me turn to you here. You know, you're somebody who's lived through the transition from on-prem to cloud you know, payroll firsthand. And what would you say are, are some of the other benefits for companies that decide to run payroll in the cloud versus maintaining on-premise solutions? So I'd like to start by setting some context. Before the consolidation, Cargill had around 20 million pieces of data relating to approximately 140,000 employees. And this was stored across a fragmented network of HR systems in support of businesses in 70 different countries. We already had 18 ADP payrolls deployed across Europe and Asia Pacific. And this situation presented Cargill with many difficulties. We had many actors that were required to fulfill the needs of employee data management processes. Each handoff introduced the risk of errors being introduced as well as increasing the lives of the cycle times. Managers found it very difficult to engage in employee data management for their employees, especially when they had to uh, report on them uh, across different countries. This resulted in large amounts of HR time being devoted to data management. It introduced inconsistencies and delays, made uh, global reporting very difficult and unreliable. Uh, we had data cleanup events that were scheduled prior to each of the main processes in the calendar, so talent review and salary review are good examples. And following the go live, Cargill has experienced a number of different benefits. So for the first time, employees and managers are directly involved in the process of managing their data. Managers and employees are using standardized processes around the globe. In agreement with our governance, risk, and controls team, proportionate and controlled access to HR data has been delivered to various HR groups. And managers have engaged in validation of critical data relating to their employees. When it comes to the benefits of having a central database, we now have complete and consistent data reporting benefits greatly. Cargill is now able to obtain up to the up-to-date information about its employees. So for cost benefits, we're now starting to see savings on maintenance and hardware and software upgrades. With cloud services, you only pay for what you need. So the move to the cloud has brought greater flexibility. The system can grow or shrink as the business requires with less effort needed to upscale our business's cloud capacity. Okay, well, th well thank you, Steve. So, you know, we've considered the numerous benefits of, of the cloud, uh, but there are also concerns about risks associated with changing HR and payroll service providers and moving to the cloud from on-premise management. You know, I'm thinking specifically of questions about risks around costs, the implementation timeline slips, implementing an outsourced model after you've been running everything in-house, and of course, risks around security. So, you know, it's a lot to address, but how, um, how would you address those concerns? Sure. Um, that's you know that's a fair summary, Theo. I and mean, maybe we could take these in kind of um, one by one. I find there's often confusion around whether or not moving to the cloud offers real savings to companies or not. And you know, in my mind, the true answer to the cost implications of running on-prem versus cloud services really depends on the approach to the question. Implementing a cloud payroll solution includes financial benefits like improved cost agility, you know, relating to infrastructure as a service because the business doesn't have to have tie up capital to implement and maintain that hardware as it becomes the responsibility of the supplier. That's the biggest thing. 
you know, I, you know, I think that's a very big deal. You know, in the cloud, all the costs, processing services, maintenance, security, compliance, upgrades, all of it, it immediately becomes the responsibility of the service provider. That means me. <laughs> and so we can spread it out over a lot of clients. Exactly. I mean, so that, I mean, your company no longer needs to sustain the cost of a full-time IT staff or worry about people leaving and retiring and having these to find you know expensive rehires. It's not like people are going to you know college for payroll these days. So let me interrupt you right there, though, Hal, because you bring up a really good point about how, about people. Can you explain to our listeners today why replacing staff in this way would would prove particularly expensive. Sure, and, I, and I'd be interested to hear, you know, uh, Steve's experience with this too. But I, I talk about this all the time. What tends to happen in organizations that have been managing their own payroll in-house for decades is that they have a very knowledgeable, IH, you know, HR and IT staff. Uh, who you know they know the systems like the back of their hands, and these people are the experts in running payroll, running the files, the taxes, you name it, and you know they know where all the bodies are buried in terms of upgrades and patches and so on, and you know many of these individuals though are, are nearing retirement age, and and companies will find it really hard to backfill these roles once these employees move on. Steve, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's correct, Hal. So over time we were developing an ongoing risk based on old technology, which was often out of vendor support. And one of the big advantages we found with ADP's approach was the fixed fee for implementation. But experience tells us that there will always be a need to request changes during implementation. This, is, this may increase the budget by a few percent, so it's important that the business subject matter expert understand this. However, we found having upfront transparent implementation costs a great help knowing that there was much less risk of cost spiraling out of control. Yeah, so you know, I would say you're generally going to be looking at an initial investment when implementing a cloud payroll solution. So there will be some increased operating expenditure at the beginning. But on-premise payroll solutions incur a number of additional costs, hidden costs really, that are not a factor with cloud solutions. Think about the cost of purchasing, implementing, maintaining the infrastructure and the software, as well as ongoing IT support. Then there are the costs associated with the unforeseen upgrades whenever a new legislative change takes place across the world. The unplanned IT costs like these can quickly spiral. The additional cost may also be upgrading your company's security systems to ensure the safety of the information stored on your on-premise system. This is something that a vendor with a cloud solution would typically cover. The short answer is, overall, moving to the cloud can save businesses money, reduce their financial burdens, and free up money to spend in other areas of the business. Well, good. Um, so, Steve, one of the concerns we hear from, from companies quite frequently is, is the fear that implementation could drag on forever, and we've had these discussions before ourselves. So I know uh, that Cargill is very concerned about this. What are your thoughts about PACE? Well, prior to the employee central implementation, we decided to replace our legacy payroll within EMEA um, uh, and then in Asia Pacific with new ADP payroll deployments. To achieve this, we developed throwaway interfaces from our legacy HR systems to these new payrolls. And this enabled us to reduce the risk to payroll operations when employee central was deployed by changing one system at a time. As the project moved forward, the team became more confident and started to change the HR systems and the payroll at the same time. In our first country deployment, we went live with Poland and the United Kingdom, and that took us nine months. This was followed by our main countries in Europe and North America, although we retained our legacy in-house payroll in North America. This totaled 23 countries, and again, we did this in 10 months. Uh, we tackled 17 countries in Asia Pacific and 16 countries in Latin America, and also 13 countries in the Middle East and Africa after that. Time attendance was also implemented for a number of these countries. And as you'll be aware, there is no room for slippage when deploying payrolls. All of our teams did a great job, and uh, we delivered on these many challenges on time. Well, that's really great. That's a, that's a lot. So you, you certainly had a lot on your plate with a, with a big global implementation scope, Stephen. Do you have any techniques you found particularly useful in coordinating all of these implementations? 
we certainly did have a lot on our plates there. So the first thing I'd stress is the importance of communications. We sort of set up a cross-program meeting cadence and had Cargill Workstream leads provide progress updates. Cargill's HR teams really took responsibility for the project, with our IT team also heavily involved. The systems integrator and ADP teams were involved in issuing updates each week, and this helped a lot with the change man management activity that was involved. Uh, we encouraged a sense of ownership, and, and that was really vital. Uh, we also made sure we implemented payrolls in EMEA and APAC first before the new HR system of record was in place, and that was crucial. With so many payrolls, you need to make sure as many payrolls are operational before deploying a new HR system. And we wanted our core HR data to be fed to our payrolls where it must be correct and can't be changed. It's worth remembering that your payroll provider doesn't have full responsibility for the project success. At the end of the day, it's Cargill's responsibility to make sure our people get paid properly and on time. Another aspect I'd uh, recommend is minimizing the amount of configuration in the new cloud payroll application. We didn't customize anything, and we were very tight on configuration changes other than when legislation demanded it. All right, so I think one of the key points you're making is that you're saying it's important to have solid governance around the project. Is that, is that fair? Exactly. So establishing design principles at the start is very important. Focus on the governance model, how things will operate, and don't forget data protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. So, so, so what else worked for Cargill in terms of employing the new payroll systems? So we gained commitment from senior leadership. Then based on the clear need to deploy quickly, we recognized the, sh the shared broadly that perfection was not the aim. We focused on the critical, for example, payroll, and fixed issues quickly as, the, as they came up after go live. We were keen to make sure HR knew that the project team were not looking to deliver on that perfection, which discouraged people from pointing the finger and resisting change. We partnered with a strong systems integrator and committed to work well with all parties. We created a global cross-functional project team of around 70 people and tried to learn from previous unsuccessful attempts to implement a single HR system around the world. We also established a set of processes with input from HR in all regions. From the start, we planned for in-person connectivity. In the past, some project teams only meant, met twice, once at the start and once at the end of the project. This time, we made sure the core team got together once a month and spent a full week together in the US or in Europe. And this meant that travel costs had to be budgeted from the start, and traveling, while it does take a toll, provided dividends, and, and they were huge for the project. We also ran in-country workshops at the beginning of the project, and then, where possible, we carried out testing for the same attendees. God, I've got it. That's a very deliberate program that you ran, Steve. So I know I've asked the question, but I, I personally just wanted to add something about implementation at this point because this is where ADP proves its value. In my um, ADP has a unique template-based methodology, which has been proven successful at helping lots of companies to accelerate the delivery of their cloud solution and make sure that they can quickly maximize the returns on investments. These templates have global, they have country, they have sector-specific components, all constantly updated to reflect new legislative changes and improvements to best practices. So you know, we like to say that there's no one-size-fits-all solution. So once all the main components are in place that are common across all companies, the, the last part of the implementation concentrates on your local and specific needs. This has the effect of you know, dramatically not, not only reducing the time, but also the impact of the uh, implementation period on, on you as a company. So another major concern, of course, is security. There's a risk associated with security. So let me turn that back to you, Andy. Sure, so more than ever, security is really a huge concern already mentioned, cloud service providers know that their reputations, as well as their clients, depend on ensuring that the very highest levels of encryption and security are in place. These days, the information that you hold on your business's operations, 
clients, your employees is really sensitive and very valuable. The loss or breach of this information and your system security can have far-reaching and drastic effects on your business, as we see all too often in the news these days. The service providers like ADP will look at where threats will come from, do everything possible to mitigate potential risks. Also, just touching upon data privacy and a huge topic that is and has been GDPR over the past few months and years. Now, ADP was one of the first vendors in the market to have binding corporate rules approved by European data privacy agencies, which means that we will have a single global golden standards when it comes to data privacy. That's a, that's a very important point about security. So let me ask Hal and then, and then Steve uh, to respond to this next question. But how, how does the approach security differ for on-premise solutions as compared to cloud? Hal? Yeah, sure. No, Theo. Um, for the cloud service providers, you know they'll have procedures and processes in place to ensure the security of their system, and I mean, this includes a lot of things, but monitoring all the equipment, restricting access to the data centers, you know, only granting access to people who have required permission to be there. You know, that need to be there. This is absolutely mission critical uh, for us. Steve, how about your experience with it? Well, when Cargill assessed ADP security capabilities, we took a very careful look at the company's data center and the way of operating. ADP's tenure in the marketplace was certainly reassuring, but we weren't going to take our uh, anything for granted. We moved our HR system of record from the US to Europe, so we were particularly mindful of European legislation, such as GDPR, as well as the role of the works councils in countries like Germany, France, and Belgium. I'd add that in some instances, cloud infrastructure may be more secure than on-premise payroll or HR systems. Enabling self-service brings additional challenges, and service providers understand this and bring in levels of security to prevent data being misused. They invest huge sums of money into security solutions that would be prohibitive for many organizations like Cargill. All right, well, let me bring it back out. So, so when you think about your journey for those that you've seen your colleagues go through, Steve, what other concerns or risks do companies worry about when they're moving their systems to the cloud? I think there'll always be concerns when moving an on-premise in-house system to a cloud-based solution managed by a service provider. As the processes will be carried out differently and that can be uncomfortable for people to adjust to. There's always a certain amount of anxiety about relinquishing control, especially when a lot of effort, including manual coding and testing, has gone into ensuring that a system meets your company's needs. You may uh, worry, excuse me, <clears throat> you may worry that uh, your in-house IT department can't make tweaks and updates to your payroll solution to make it do what you want and specifically the, the ways you want it done. Uh, but moving to the cloud doesn't mean that you have to lose all control over your payroll processing. ADP, for example, offers companies three different levels of payroll service, processing, managed, and comprehensive. Cargill's payroll and technical teams are developing a partnership with ADP's teams. We have a service relationship manager in each region and regularly review items relating to the country's payroll. This now means that Cargill's focus is on sending data to the payrolls, while ADP's focus is on operating the payrolls. Absolutely right. And, of course, with a cloud solution, the burden to resolve issues rests with your service provider, in this case ADP, and more specifically with me. That's right. With our on-premise solutions, we were responsible if something went wrong, and it was a cost to our IT department the HR department and the business to find and fix the problem. In terms of having the features you want and adjusting them to your business's needs, we found that the ADP solution does allow us to configure, for example, making changes to dashboards and functionalities to support our business's needs, and sometimes even, even uh, people's specific preferences. And of course, customization brings us on to the question of scalability. You know, there's no point and having the perfect solution in place today if it can't cope with your needs in a few years down the line. And a cloud solution will offer the flexibility necessary to scale your payroll solution up or down as your needs change, whether you're making an acquisition, a divestiture, if you're doing mass hiring, or 
sadly, but sometimes mass layoffs, et cetera. And uh, you, you also need global support, emphasis on that, on the global part of that. With ADP Global Payroll, uh, you have access to expertise in more than 140 countries to help you accurately process your payroll on time across a dispersed workforce, no matter how big, how small your, your various global offices are. If you're going to migrate to the cloud successfully, you need a company that's fully committed to meeting global payroll needs. And ADP has that strong commitment to global. We started building and buying our way into global markets 40 years ago, back in the 1970s. And we continue to make big investments in infrastructure, knowledge, and, and capability. No, you're absolutely right, Theo. Um, ADP definitely does. And um, these days, it's it's not just about payroll. I mean, it, as if you know, getting that right is not enough of a challenge. Organizations now need the ability to access accurate data from every part of the HR function and provide that complete visibility back into the C-suite. Integration is key here. Yes, that's the word, in integration. The importing and synchronization of data between employee systems, such as between an HR system record and a payroll system. This is critical in my view, and I'd like to explore how integration differs for on-premise versus cloud-based uh, solutions, payroll solutions and HR software. But before we do, Andy, maybe you could just give us a little bit more about how, the integration concept. Sure, Theo. So integrating employee data across diverse systems like HR, payroll, time and attendance application. So integrating that data promises everything from better, faster reporting to help with compliance. Companies today, they view it as a way of cutting admin time and costs, uh, avoiding duplicating tasks, ultimately reducing payroll errors associated with manual data entry. There are two approaches that clients can take. So you could opt for shared file integration or use real-time integration. Now, shared file integration is ideally suited for batch processing. So this offers a snapshot of data in a particular system at a specific time to be shared with another system. This is not real-time data sharing and processing. Typically, on-premise solutions would use shared file integration. Right. Yeah. So, so what about real-time integration? Right, so real-time integration is probably the best approach, and this is really where we see companies moving to these days. So companies can achieve this through the use of an API, through the use of live replication between the clients and ADP system. But the great thing about this is that information is always up to date, and having live data replication also removes risks associated with duplicate and redundant data. Having a cloud platform means that managers and HR departments can access information from anywhere. And with real-time integration possible with cloud solutions, you get an accurate view of your workforce, which can really help your business solve problems and improve data analytics. That's a great explanation, Andy. So, so Steve, thinking about companies who want to integrate employee systems in-house versus in the cloud, what would you say are the relative challenges? Well, it can be very difficult to integrate multiple on-premise HR systems when they have already been implemented. We tried this many years ago by using a bespoke HR data warehouse, and this gave us a single data model in one database, but it was very difficult to maintain the incoming interfaces. Technical difficulties can also be an issue with integration, but a vendor offering integration as a service will have solutions in place to address technical issues that may arise when integrating systems from multiple vendors. Yeah, right. And if I said I was passionate about integration, I would be severely underestimating my feelings. Uh, you know, if there's a piece of advice I can, I can give you today, some, something for you to write down, it would be to be wary of the term integration uh, because it's like calling something blue. There's light blue, there's dark blue, and there's everything in between. So you'll be doing yourself and your and your company a huge service if you can look carefully at what a company like ADP is providing in terms of integration. This is a major destination for our research and development dollars because we think it really matters. So how it would be interesting to hear more detail about how cloud payroll solutions can address the issues and offer the kind of benefits we've discussed and how this fits with companies' existing HR systems. 
Sure, and I'd say it's fair to, uh, that to say that most of the who are attending the, the, what today's webinar are, are probably running SAP on-prem payroll software, though I believe there are some other companies who have joined us that are using other ERP solutions. And regardless of whether you're on SAP, Oracle, Workday, you know, obviously a major consideration before you move payroll to the cloud is how is this going to sync with your HR solution. And it's fair to say that ADP takes almost an obsessive approach to improving integrations to our major ERPs. It represents a huge, substantial chunk of our R&D budget. And what we're interested in is really reducing the cost, the time, the complexity for our clients across the board, not just the, you know, the payroll process itself. Key thing here is that ADP Global Payroll integrates fully with SAP Employee Central Payroll, with real-time transfer, employee master data from, you know, from EC to ADP Global Payroll available in over you know, 75 countries. But also it's really important to know that ADP Global Payroll also offers flexibility in that it can integrate with a range of other HR solutions, including you know, those solutions from suppliers like Oracle, Workday, and Infor. If you look to the next slide, this, this means if you implement ADP Global Payroll but have other HR solutions in place, you don't need to change all of your HR solutions at the same time as you know, the various solutions can be integrated to work together and really to meet all of your company's HR needs. It's a really important piece of that. All right, that's a good point. And something I think is worth clarifying as well, uh, because I know there has been a lot of interest in it over recent months, particularly for SAP clientele, is the topic of SAP's plans for customers that are currently running on on-prem HR and payroll solutions, and the issue of SAP continuing to support those on-prem options. So, uh, Andy? Yeah, so SAP has confirmed that it will accommodate its on-premise customers by offering them the option to either migrate to cloud-based EC payroll or convert to a new on-premise HCM option with support guaranteed until 2030. Now, along the way, SAP will require clients to migrate to HANA and then to a sidecar solution, which is under development. Now, whichever on-premise solution your company is using, Staying on your on-premise payroll may seem like the path of least resistance, at least for now, but it also comes with certain uncertainty around the capacity and longevity of solution support, both internally as well as from your provider. The crucial point is, when you come to a cloud provider like ADP, all of this technical complexity around HANA and the sidecar issue becomes our problem to take care of, solve on your behalf. Absolutely. Absolutely right. So we've covered a fair amount in a relatively short amount of time, uh, 33 minutes. It's probably a good time to see what the audience thinks and, and make sure we've covered the topics that people would really like to um, cover. Um, now we had a lot of questions come. We had some questions, in fact, that came before uh, we began the session even. Um, and if you haven't seen already, you can, you can type your questions into the Q&A box on the right of your screen, and we'll do the best that we can to answer as many of these as we hear. And again, if we don't get to your question, we'll, we'll come back to you after the session for sure. Um, so one of the questions we got was, it's an interesting question, is speaker is asking, our, our company has invested in customizing our on-prem payroll solution over the years uh, to help us meet a range of very specific Requirements. How would moving to a cloud payroll solution affect this customization? Let, let me let me take that one myself. So uh, it's a great question. So those customizations were probably made to accommodate the functional needs of your business over time. And I believe that we can achieve the same business outcomes by using our templated approach. We serve all industries, so we've seen virtually every scenario. We learn every day, of course. Uh, but we've seen a lot. So we have most requirements already in our templates, in our experience base, uh, which leaves room for configuration for special needs. In fact, a, a reasonable portion of the ADP implementation process is evaluating those special requirements and figuring out how to do them in a smart and efficient way. Uh, this will be, the, you know, I want you to take note of this too. What you don't want to do is set yourself up to outsource your payroll in. Uh, in a, call it a lift and shift scenario. Sometimes people call this your mess for less. 
and this is where an outsource provider just takes over exactly what you have. We specifically, ADP, all business units at ADP, we don't do that kind of business because it's not scalable. It doesn't allow for rapid innovation. It's very difficult to apply changes without the risk of something blowing up. It's, it's a whole lot less secure, and in the end, it's a lot more expensive for you and for us. So uh, we don't recommend that. But one more point. Most of our clients, you know, my experience, and I think Howard would agree, is that uh, clients use this as an opportunity to reset what they're doing, the processes that they're following. And many times we've seen age-old requirements fall right into the gutter uh, once a business gets focused and decides that it wants to be more efficient. Okay. Uh, there's another question here. And the question is, our company is planning to move our HR and payroll systems to the cloud and is currently evaluating RFPs from cloud vendors. We're getting conflicting advice on the order of migration. What does ADP recommend? Should we move HR or payroll first? Andy, um, this is a good one for you. Yeah, no, so it's a great question, Theo. So there's no single answer for all companies. It really depends on, on the situation of each and every com um, company. Now, there are pros and corresponding cons to taking payroll live first, taking HR live first, or even going live with HR and payroll simultaneously. Um, Let's get a good answer for your company. Of course, we'd be happy to sit down for a consultative discussion about what makes practical sense for you, depending on your current situation. However, there is one common fact that you can count on that I believe we've been able to prove by working with so many clients. And that fact is that you must take payroll requirements into consideration when implementing your new HR system. The thing is, when companies do not do this, some of the things that we've seen uh, have been problems with data accuracy, poor employee experience, expensive retrofits as well for the HR system after go live. Now on that last point, let me just emphasize this. What we've seen on a number of occasions are clients who have set up their new HR system of record without understanding, without having taken into consideration how payroll will be run. Then much to their annoyance, they find out that they either have to go back and fix the configuration of the HR system, which adds cost and effort, or they simply decide to deal with the problems such as incorrect payrolls, inputting information in multiple places, and higher costs to run payroll. But I can assure you that you do not want this to happen. For ADP, we've built the mechanism to deal with whichever scenario makes the most sense for you. For example, we have subject matter experts who can advise your chosen HR system integrator how payroll will work and therefore ensure that they follow the best way to set up the HR system of records and the prerequisites in order to get the most out of it and the integration with ADP Global Payroll. Good, very good answer. Uh, here is a third question. Uh, I think this one's gonna to go to you, Steve. It says, what impact did introducing self-service modules have on the implementation experience? So the HR teams need to do what they can to clean critical HR data before go live. However, before you go live, you need to prepare your employees, managers, and HR teams for the deployment of self-service. Let them know that you expect some of the data to be inaccurate. They also need to know that its cleanliness is vital to the business. The data will be immediately accessible to employees following go live. So if it remains wrong, it will cause problems. Employees and managers need to understand that they will become responsible for maintaining some of the HR data. Within Cargo, we ran data integrity campaigns after go live in each region. We encouraged employees and managers to check their data clean and to use self-service to correct it where necessary. Ownership of the data is a mind sh mindset shift, not just the mechanics of accessing and cleaning it, you're likely to see different attitudes to this, with some people jumping on it straight away and others who come to it later. Think of it as changing not just the technology and the process, but people's attitudes and their responsibilities. Good, good answer. Uh, we have some more questions that have come in here. Let me, uh, and keep them coming by the way, if you're if you're out there listening and you're, you got something, don't be shy, because they come right to our inbox here and we can, we can read them. Um, even this one, I think this is for you. It says, what kind of on 
premise system did Cargill use before migrating to the cloud? Oh, we have a, uh, a multitude of different systems. So even in the North American region today, we still use PeopleSoft for payroll. We used to use it for HR, but we split the, the HR element out of that. Uh, we had something called IHR, and we had that in Asia Pacific, in Europe, and in various countries in Latin America. And over time, we started to, to take some of those out. So we replaced uh, IHR with SAP's OMPA solution back in 2012, and that really was a stepping stone to, to what we achieved with the ADP payrolls. Um, today, as you've heard, you know, we're, we're in um, employee central with ADP payrolls in, in the main, and, and that's a much better place for us to be. I think, uh, Steve, your story is very common. I get a lot of clients who come from a patchwork of solutions. They just they have a lot of different HR systems that they'll have, and then on top of that, they'll have an even more payroll system, sometimes even payroll systems that they didn't even know about that came from an acquisition that's been running off on the side and nobody nobody knew about it. Indeed, and with just one, one or two, just one or two very skilled individuals supporting them, it's, uh, it's a very risky situation. Yeah, right. Single point of failure. Right. Um, okay. Here's another one here. Um, how this is probably good for you. Uh, it says we use SAP ERP system ECC 6.0 to process payroll. And it says, I know SAP has success factors. How uh, do you compare your solution with SAP's traditional HR and success? So that's a great question. And, you know, as, as SAP is, is working on their own, what I would call next-gen payroll, um, the employee central payroll is what they've had as an interim uh, solution. Uh, different than that, the ADP Global View payroll platform and our global payroll solutions have really been tried and true. So we're, you know, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, you know, uh, across the board, we're in deep uh, with, as, as Theo indicated, with the way we do our approach, template, con you know, approach, we look at the localizations. Um, so we've got the experience across, you know, top 200 uh, companies to handle that type of thing. It'd be a great uh, discussion to have on a one-off and really go through that comparison uh, from an employee central payroll um, versus global view. All right, good. Okay, coming to another question. It says, we are currently working on California vacation sick PTO rules. Of course, that's probably a full-time job just <laughs> dealing with that, just California. Uh, it's, it, it is really hard to get all the rules in place. Does ADP support those rules? Yes, we do. But I'm going to let I'm going to let uh, Andy answer that. Yeah, sure. So um, we we have a enterprise solution for for, for time and attendance for uh, labor management. So this is um, this is a global solution that we have. So we've scaled this up in the recent years to make sure that we cover uh, we cover a huge part of of the country scope um, that we also have payroll in as well. So it's a comprehensive. Um, time and labor management solution, and we can cover complex requirements when it comes to vacation, sickness, PTO rules. So it would be something that would be discussed during the blueprinting and during the implementation phase, and then we'd be sure to set this up, um, test it during the implementation, make sure that this is all ready for you to use once it's up and running in life. Yeah, and I think we serve, I, I'd, I'd go out on a limb to say that probably most of our clients in the U.S. are have some office in California, some part of their population in California. So we have a lot of experience uh, dealing with California legislation. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, let me let me take this next one. This is a, this is a good question. Um, explains a little bit how we work. It says, for a company with 3,000 employees, uh, can you give us a rough estimate of implementation and ongoing costs if we went to ADB Cloud? Of course, uh, absolutely we can do that. I, I wouldn't be able to just rattle it off here for you. Um, it, because it, we have to sit down and understand some, some details to be able to do that. We have to understand, for example, um, what ancillary services you want with that, how, the, how, you do your, how you do your pay throughout the month. Is it weekly, biweekly, is it monthly? How do you do your pay? There's a lot of details that go into it, but absolutely we can do that. I'd be glad, anybody who's on the phone here, um, part of this webinar, we'd be glad to sit down with you and 
walk through and, and talk through um, an estimate, be glad to do that. No problem. Just, just reach out. We're more than happy. Uh, here's, a, here's the last question that came through. It says, sometimes we create a copy of a production system to a sandbox system to run tests new functionality and so on. How would this idea work with ADP Cloud? Good question. Maybe Andy or Hal, I'm not sure um, who's best to answer that. Yeah, Theo, this is Hal, and so, yeah. Andy, you can jump in and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we definitely have the ability to, you know, create a sandbox environment, a test environment uh, for you to you know, ma manipulate, run reports, and, and, and see the results. Uh, and you can do that actually at any time in, in, the, in the process, but you, it's definitely an opportunity to do it during implementation. And, and as you look at your data, it, obviously data integrity is, is critical to us and, and our overall success. Andy, any additional thoughts? Uh, yeah, without getting into too much detail, there are different service levels as well that ADP offers. So there's, um, there's some of the classic ones is what we would call processing, which is where we, we implement the, the cloud solution, payroll solution on your behalf, but you retain the expertise and the resources in-house to, to run that payroll. And there's another one, which is, is probably more common, which is managed service, which is we implement, but we also provide the expertise. So, you know, we, we become that payroll department on your behalf. So we're the ones running that payroll. So there could be some differences there as well with regards to who is testing what, but this is uh, this is made clear during during the implementation and the servicing of um, of the solution based on the service model that you have chosen. Good. Okay. Well, I think we've answered the questions that were submitted. I don't see any new ones coming through, but it's not too late. It's not too late. You can still submit questions, um, and maybe we'll give it a second here while I. Could you advance to the uh, next slide for me? Is it possible to advance to the next two slides? There we go. Perfect. Thank you. I'm not going to go through these slides, but the next two slides, and I think you're able to download the presentation as well. Uh, we have a couple of commercial slides here you can, you can look through. And as you think through your business case about how you want to uh, discuss with your company about moving to the cloud and the risks and so on, uh, these are some reasons that we have, uh, we think that we're a good choice as a partner for you. And so please, you know, have a look through this. And I won't read it here because I feel like it's a commercial, but, um, you know, we believe all these points and these are, these are absolutely true and we can, we can be very much helpful to you. Uh, another question just came in, actually. Uh, how do we contact ADP next? Uh, that's a good question. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. I think that there is a contact through this webinar. I think the, the uh, maybe I can get some help from the moderators, but I think that there's a contact button actually as part of the webinar. Is that correct? Anybody know? Nicola, we can reach you know? out. I'm sure we've got. Yeah. Contact information of all of the uh, of all of the participants, so uh, we can reach out. Okay. And also, I mean, if you want to just, I'm very happy. You can just reach out to me directly too. My name is Theo Curry, T H E O, dot C U R E Y at ADP dot com. If you want to reach out to me or Hal or Andy, we're all um, very easygoing, friendly people. Glad to take your calls and questions. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we go to the last um, the last page there? See if there are any new questions coming in. Um, finish up. So you know, just I think as I mentioned already, this presentation and additional information are available in the resources section on the right hand side of your screen. Um, but thank you to everyone who participated in today's session. Uh, Steve, thank you for joining us, and all the people who attended. Thank you for coming and spending your time with us. Um, you know, Hal and Andy, um, Steve, thanks for sharing your insights and answering the questions. If it wasn't covered, again, if something occurs to you later today, don't worry. We'll come back to you with an answer. Just submit a question. We'll come right back to you. Um, and, we'll, of course, we'll send you an email with a recording of the webinar with additional links to resources in the next 24 hours or so. Uh, if you have a moment, I think there's going to be a pop-up survey. We'd love to get your feedback. So have a good rest of the day. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>